Hey y'all, welcome to my butterfly garden. You're not gonna believe this, but I have some things to show you. So let's go. Okay, first, I think it was in the last video I was talking about um, these organza bags and wondering, you know, what, what would a caterpillar do in there? Well, right there you can see what a caterpillar did. It went ahead and pupated. It's on a leaf. And um, I will move it. It just pupated, so the chrysalis is soft, so I'm not going to touch it at all. But um, anyway, that happened. But on a not so good note, let me show you something else. Remember how I had organza bags on this? Well, I walked by and something didn't look right. You know how something will catch in the corner of your eye? There were ants all over one of them. So I took them off and we're okay in there. But don't put organza bags on if they're going to be touching the ground, I guess is what I would say. Because little tiny ants can get up in there. And, you know... We just don't want anything strange happening. So now he's on the loose again. I don't love them on the tuberosa, although this is where he was laid as an egg and has been. But they're so low, the ground is so easy for those lizards to come and just snatch them up. Hmm. So, do I move him onto a tall swamp milkweed, or do I leave him where he is? There's always, always, always questions when you're trying to help out the monarch butterflies. I mean, I've changed up food on monarchs before, and they've been fine, so I probably will move him over. And there's two smaller caterpillars on the other tuberosa, and the leaves have that rust on them, just that one. So I think I'm gonna move them too because I'd rather them have healthy leaves. I'll show you what I mean. These are my two Florida ecotype tuberosas. And you can see there's a little caterpillar, but look at the little rust dots underneath. And then there's another one right there. And honestly, I think my swamp milkweed looks so much more healthy I would think it's got to be better for them. So I'm gonna move all three. Thank you for helping me make that decision. And look at this tuberosa right here. It's giving me some seed pods. Now I might cover them with a bag just to make sure that the milkweed bugs don't try and steal my seed pods. Look how big and adorable this guy is. He's probably gonna pupate soon also. Okay, so I moved the two smaller ones onto here, and I'm gonna cover this up, and then I'll go get the and big while one. While I was over here looking for a good stem to put the big caterpillar on, I noticed this um, sleepy hibiscus branch. <laughs> Look there, there it is, is really leaning over into there's some swamp milkweed under here that's just been totally not getting good sun so i think i'm going to trim this up but look what i found do you see it there's a queen so we're going to cover the queen up too <laughs> oh my goodness i love this well let me tell you that opened a whole can of worms. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm gonna move him over here. I covered the queen and there's a nice good clump of swamp milkweed right there. You gonna move on to it? Yeah, look at that. He says, I don't know, this is not the food I was eating. There we go. I'm going to cover this sweet baby up. Okay, so let me show you what happened when I trimmed that uh, sleepy hibiscus. 
it uncovered like this entire area, which was full of weeds. So then I went and weeded it out. But there's this milkweed that's been back here. And none of it's like, that's not milkweed, that's the bush mint. But none of it's like doing super well because it's been getting the shade. So I'm debating whether, like those ones will be okay, but these lower ones, I might trim some of them down to get some regrowth going. But on a good note, then we uncovered up this friend here who I still haven't identified, but I think I might know who it is. And then look at this one now is getting more sun. And then this one right here is uh, getting a little bit more sun too because I trimmed some of the uh, sleepy hibiscus that was going over here. Oh, look at that monarch right there. Oh, look at the two monarchs right there. But no worries because I still have tons of sleepy hibiscus left. So it needed a good trimming. And then it can all grow in and be amazing. So remember a long time ago in a video I made where I had ordered some dahlia bulbs just to see what they would do and I potted them? Well, they're doing something. They're blooming. And I've got them like all in, in weird places set around like my work area. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to move them around and stick the pots like down in my garden, kind of like I do with the zinnias. But I'm curious to see like if anything goes after them. They don't really have that center cluster of pollen like the tithonia or the zinnias um, that I can see. But anyway, we're, I'm going to go show them to you. They're pretty flowers. There's uh, two that are blooming and um, oh, we'll, just, we'll just go see what happens with them. It'll just add a little pop of extra color in my garden, especially because I just trimmed back my Isabellini zinnias, those beautiful yellow ones. They actually got so heavy, they were falling over in the driveway for my cart, my cart driveway. So all that bright yellow is now sadly missing. So now we'll have this color. Okay, so I've got several of them back here. There's one there, one there, there's two back there. And the bloom's not open all the way, but this is what we've got so far. I love the color though. So I'm not sure when that center, like I said, I know nothing about dahlias. When that center opens up, I don't know if there's gonna be a little flat area. I could go Google the image, but it's more fun. It's more fun to wait and see. Here's another one that's blooming and it does look more like the center is just gonna be more of the same. Kinda like a carnation maybe. It looks like fire. You know, like flames of fire. All right, so I'm gonna go set these around my garden and we'll see who visits them. And I don't know if you all have noticed or not, but I have not mentioned the wetland garden. I can't even think about it. Do you see how shiny I am? It is so, humid today so humid I feel like I'm aging backwards there is no aging like dehydrated skin today in Florida we are all very moisturized here so I'm not I'm not I'm not digging a big hole today or taking out the plumbago but I didn't forget it's still gonna happen I need that rain cooled air and the clouds are building up so maybe I'll get it later Oh, and today, y'all, well, let me chat somewhere else, give you something better to look at in the background. Or different, not that, or different. Today is my last day of summer break. I go back to work tomorrow. I want to cry, but I'm not going to. I've been in my garden all day, and it's been lovely, and I am going to miss this so much, just being able to come out here. But I also am grateful for the summer I had because I know not everyone gets the luxury of having 
the entire summer off. However, y'all teaching is hard. <laughs> it's hard. But um, it, it, it's going to be a great year, though. And the kids are great. It's, it's all the, there's just, there's so much other stuff. All right. I'm going to go put those dahlias out and about in my garden. Now I got my Falco pruners. Link below. Love them. Um, I have never had to sharpen these since I bought them. And it's, it's been a minute since I bought them. So I really, really love their uh, reliability. Down here, there used to be a walkway that I could walk back and check my Wooly Dutchman's pipe vine. And it's completely grown over. So me and Falco here are going to do a little trim trim. So I can get back there and see how my Wooly Dutchman's Pipe Vine is doing. The Wooly Dutchman's Pipe Vine is host to the Pipe Vine Swallowtail and the Polydama Swallowtail. And see this right here? This right here is the walkway. Look. <laughs> it, you can't get through. It's like a jungle. And look at this. This, this is is a fire bush it, it's just coming up there so i don't want to take it out but i want to be able to walk by Th these two are going to get trimmed they need deadheaded for sure but then they're leaning forward and i'm just going to help them lean back up so i can get through and go visit My Wooly Dutchman's pipe vine, which is back there. All right, I'm starting to see my way through this. So this was the original entrance to the walkway. But over here in front of this clump of border grass, it looks like a better way to travel. <laughs> so I'm going to move this clump of border grass. So move the entrance to the, the trail, the path over here. I think that's going to be better because then all those guys can just stay there and just get straightened up a little bit. Okay, y'all, I made it through. <laughs> and I found something adorable. <laughs> Here we go. Ta-da! All the way back. Now I can get back to my sweet almond and tame the top of it again. Remember when I bent the branches down? They're still wired. I haven't undone them to see what'll happen. But what I've been doing is as um, higher ones keep sticking up, I pull them down and tuck them under some of the branches that are wired. <laughs> so <laughs> they might just stay wired. But let's get back on task. I still have some weeding to do, but I can walk around the bend and get to my pipe vine and not only that but look who is sitting right here to greet me mm -hmm. mr adorable look at how adorable of course this one's coming in with me because because it is and i've got i've got lots of little pipe vines i can i can feed one caterpillar just because it was waiting out here to greet me. And honestly, I don't see any more. So, so we're, we're going to take him in. All right, there's my potted pipe vine. And here's Mr. Adorable. And we're just going to set him right there. And he's going to live happily ever after. Okay, y'all. So, I didn't get to show you where I put the dahlias, but they are really pretty. They're kind of right in where the yellow is the Bellini zinnias were. Um, but it's starting to rain. And it's gym night, so I'm going to go get ready for the gym. And enjoy my last evening. I got to set my alarm. And it all starts again tomorrow. I'll see y'all real soon. Remind me next time we're together and I'm filming to show you the dahlias. Hey y'all, the day is here. It is Thursday morning and I am ready.
ready to go into work. Today is a half professional development, which means training. And uh, I think the, we get some time to work in our rooms too, which my room's ready. I can teach tomorrow. Um, so I'm just doing a quick loop through my garden. I do want to try and do this every morning. I won't necessarily bring you with me. I have to step over. <laughs> um, but it just, like it used to be sad, but I, I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be like a walk through the garden and look around and know this is what's going to be waiting for me when I get home. Not, oh, I'm going to miss being able to spend all day out here. I got to train my brain. Oh my gosh, there's a hummingbird right there. All right, so, oh, look. <laughs> thumbs up like button, thumbs up like button. Okay. So I'll see y'all later. I hope you all have a great day and I'll let you know after work because mm -hmm. we'll be out here. Hopefully it won't be raining. Hey y'all, it's Thursday. Just got home from work and I'm feeling pretty good. Got lots of energy. So I'm just now for the first time walking out in my garden See what's going on it's kind of fun because then when you're not out here all day every day you know there can be like a few more surprises waiting for you so hopefully they're all good surprises yeah I just checked the other um, eggs on my wild lime they still haven't hatched yet and I was starting to wonder like they're taking so long but look there's a baby in this one so that's fabulous now I have hope that the other eggs will all hatch as well. Look at this beautiful white peacock. Just sitting here in my wetland garden. Hey y'all, so look what came. And look what it says. Contents chilled. Open immediately. That has me curious. But sometimes, um, this is the balm, the lip balm. I, I feel like I just ordered it and it's here already. Sometimes these fresh things that are made out of natural ingredients look at that packaging, um, have to be refrigerated. So, came with an ice brick. Look at this. I mean, a handwritten note. says, thank you so much for your order and support. The cleansing balm was pre-chilled, so you can bring to a cool room temperature for the perfect texture and experience. Thank you for showing one of my favorite, most meaningful creations. I hope you love it. After I filmed my last video, um, I went back on the website because I thought, I don't want to tell you all about this if they don't have a lot left, and it said sold out. So I reached out to her and I said, it says sold out. And I, and I told her I was gonna mention it on my channel. And um, so she went in it and fixed it. It's not sold out. She says she always has um, a supply of this. And here's some information about Monarch Joint Venture. And then here is the package. Chrysalis cleansing balm and echinacea infused lip balm. And I'm pretty sure these are the popcorn that I know they are because I can tell by motion them. But if you put them in water, they disintegrate. So not clogging up landfills. Packaging is all recyclable. I love that. So let's go ahead and about um, her and what got her started with a uh, small pollinator garden and she became a monarch butterfly steward expanding their pollinator garden year by year I love that I hadn't thought of calling us stewards that's fabulous 
sell them. Here's information about the two products. And here they are. Oh, I love it when they come with these little spooky things. Look at, I mean, this stuff here. The little hand-tied wrapped. This is small business all the way. I love supporting companies like this. It's like a tea bag. It is a tea bag. Homemade tea. Okay, so here's the little spoon to get out. Look at the jar. Now, I'm not going to use it right now, but I will use it tonight. And when I film again, I'll let you know, but I'm going to smell it. Oh, it smells good. Just get a little bit of it. And you can see the texture of it. It feels really good. It feels really emollient, really balmy. I'm excited to try it. Okay, and then we'll check out the lip gloss, or not lip gloss, but infused lip balm. Oh, this is the case. I was thinking I was going to take this off and then it would be inside, but no, this is it. Oh my gosh, it's in completely compostable packaging. And I was thinking it was going to be a little chapstick size, but no. Look how look how large the balm is. All right, so let's balm up. Well, that feels really emollient too. Oh yeah. I, I know for sure I'm going to love this. So anyway, I'll let you know later after I use them how I like them, but I just love supporting another butterfly lover. And if it's buying something that I know I will for sure use, 100%, 100%. So yay! Again, the company name is, find it. Hands Organic Skin Care. I love this. If it's not directly from nature, we don't use it, period. All right. I hope you enjoyed this little little unboxing of a fun little random find while I went down the Instagram rabbit hole, but I, I'm thrilled that I did. got to, you know, get in touch with somebody else and... I just think that's fabulous. Oh, and I just want to pop back in and show you. Yes, they are the melt with water, peanuts, the tissue paper, cardboard box, the ice pack is biodegradable, paper tape, crinkle paper, everything is sustainable packaging. I love that. Yeah, I love fun stuff like that. So I just want to pop back in and say that um, that was not sponsored. I bought that myself. She didn't even know I was going to talk about her until like after I'd made the decision and reached out to her. And anyway, I just let you know that. So there's so many butterflies out here. When I first got home from work, I was a little bit disheartened because there were a couple, but I was like, where are they all? And like, I think they, I think they are waiting for me because they're all out now. There's a spice bush, there's a monarch. They're, they're just fluttering everywhere. So I'm so happy to see that. Okay. I, I want to give a little update on my organza bags. I decided that I don't like them being trapped in there because you just never know. I wouldn't want them to run out of food. I just don't like them being trapped. So what I have done is I've opened the bottom a little so that if they're climbing down the stem, they'd easily be able to get out. But it would be very difficult for something to get in. And a lot of times they like to leave to go molt and I just don't want them to be trapped. This bag is a lot smaller than the enclosure, so that's my personal decision, but I'm just sharing it with you. Um, and it also let the frass fall down and out, so we'll see how that goes. Look how cute.
Okay, I just have to add one more, just one thing. <laughs> I put some of the lip balm on when I took it in. And I really, I really like like the way it feels, but it smells so good. So my nose, which is right above, is just taking that in. It just smells really good. It's not a perfumey scent. Um, it's a very natural scent because that's just the kind of stuff I like. So. If you like natural scents, you might like it. It is such a gift to be able to come home from work and just sit here and watch this. And see the flowers and the butterflies and the organza bags. Yeah, look at this gorgeous Palamedes swallowtail. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. Y'all yeah, look, there's Monarch on my Dahlia. They do like them. That is so good to know. Because what I love about these is that they're tall flowers. So just like the zinnias, you can put them in pots and then just stick them in the middle of your dense garden and let their little pretty flower heads pop up. Oh, look, it just flew onto the other one too. Yay!